Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. One of the most unpredictable things about this business of entertainment is talent. We have seen singers become actors. Example, Frank Sinatra. And actors become singers. Example, Jeff Chandler. Steve Allen composes music. Ernie Kovacs writes a novel. Jackie Gleason conducts an orchestra. And now we present the latest talent turnabout, Stan Freeberg, satirist, whom you are about to hear in a new identity, Stan Freeberg, actor. Listen, listen then as Mr. Freeberg stars in Alibi Me, which begins in exactly one minute. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe. Joe. Uh, uh. Come on, Joe, get up. It's two o'clock. What do you want? Joe, you got to get off that couch and fix up the yard. Oh, Joe. It's Saturday. Let me sleep. No, we've got to keep the place in good shape. Now rise and shine. Oh, come on, Daphne. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Always tomorrow. You can't keep putting things off. I don't. Who was it bought the savings bond to take care of our future? Who suggested the idea? Well, who read the story in the paper that told about bonds being a good investment because they pay off $4 for every three? And uh, who pointed out the article for you to read? Well... Right. And now I'm pointing out the yard to you. Our bonds are guaranteed by the government. Our grass isn't. Mo. That proves it. What? A little knowledge in the hands of the wrong person can be dangerous. What does that mean? You know one plain, simple fact. Bonds are a good investment. Now, you not only use it to get me to buy a bond a month on the payroll savings plan, but you'll probably use it against me the rest of my life. If it gets you to mow the yard, I will. Move out, boy. I'm going, I'm going. But understand this. My next wife is going to show more respect for my hard work. So would I if I ever saw any. Bye. Murder. And now, Alibi Me, starring Stan Freeberg. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This time it's a showdown. I've took all I'm going to take from Julie. It's tough enough to hustle a buck even without interference from him. This time it's a showdown. For real. Julie, I want to talk to you. What? Look at you. No manners. No knock on the door. No could I come in. No good afternoon. No manners. No class. Always on the muscle. I want to talk to you. A little more relaxative with a voice. This ain't no candy store in Brownsville. Now listen, Julie. Didn't you hear what I said? Keep it quiet. Keep it class. I want to know what's the big idea, you hear me? I just come from Pitkin Avenue. There ain't a candy store. There ain't a pool room. There ain't a bar that'll handle my punch boards anymore. Not one. We now take from Julie, they said. They said correct. But, but that's my territory. I build up the punch board business there. I know. I watched. You hustled good. You built it up real nice for me, and I appreciate it. I already sent you the biggest lollipop in town. The biggest lollipop in town for the town's biggest sucker. Julie, I'm warning you. You're warning me what? What'll you do? Give me a double whammy like in the funnies? Ever since we was kids, you hate me, I hate you, and it's like a kind of mutual life insurance. That punch board business is mine. I need it. I need that dough. You need dough? I'll tell you what. Here's a half a buck. Run down, get me a corned beef sandwich, and keep the change. Here, catch. <laughs> Julie! Julie, I told you I... Look at the face on him. If looks could kill, huh, kid? I'm not kidding, Julie. What? Now put that phone down, Georgie. No. Put it down, kid. Now remember Larkin. Six o'clock, I got to report to Larkin on my parole. They're going to know you done it. Georgie Larkin is going to know it. Georgie! <clears throat> that does it. No pulse. Nothing. Not a flutter. Just one stinker less in the world. I looked down at Julie and I remember standing next to him in Larkin's office in the precinct station house years ago. And Larkin saying, If one of you punks is ever knocked off, my first suspect will be the other. I'd better have a good alibi, whichever one of you does it. 
Because I'm warning you now. Once I get you down to headquarters, you're a hot seater. I need an alibi. A good alibi. How much time do I have to set one up? Now, let's see. Ten after four. And at six, Julie's supposed to report to Larkin. Till six. Okay? That's an hour and 50 minutes. For an alibi, I need people. Who will alibi me? Who? Leo. The bartender down at the Shamrock. He's the one. He'll alibi me. Good old Leo. Georgie! Oh, Georgie, Lord love you. Boy, you're a safer sir, I <laughs> Hey, what do you have, huh? Just name it, it's on the house. Ah, uh, Scotch. Scotch. Sure. <laughs> Leo, uh, hey, yeah, boy. we've known each other a long time, yes? I hate to think of the years that's passed since we met. <laughs> I'm getting old, Georgie, old. Uh, not too old to remember a couple of favors I've done for you. Georgie, boy, not if I was to live to be a hundred. <laughs> hey, here, drink hearty, huh? <laughs> Thanks, sir. Look, I, I want you to do a little something for me. Oh, well, look, kid, I, I'm a little short right now. No, 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 it ain't uh, money. I, it's just, uh, well, in case you should be asked, uh, I've been sitting here since half past three, huh? Yeah? Why? What's the difference, why? Anybody special you want me to say it to? You gonna do it or no? Oh, look, Georgie, I got a right to know what I'm getting into. You want me for an alibi? I want to know why. Well, let's not make a production out of it. Uh, chances are you won't be asked. But if you are, I've been here since half past three. You know what I mean? Okay? Would uh, Lieutenant Larkin maybe be one of the ones who might ask? Could be. <laughs> look, Georgie, you want money? I'll find your money. I don't know where, but I'll find it. You want food? I'll feed you. You want clothes? Just say the word, huh? But if Larkin is looking for you... I ain't alibying you. In a moment, we continue with the second act of... Suspense. Memo on medals. Interesting information about our military awards and decorations. Campaign medals were authorized by Congress in 1905 for all officers and men engaged in specified wars and military action, including such widely divergent battles as the Civil War in the United States and the Boxer Rebellion in China. The Navy and Marine Corps have a special Manila Bay Medal for members of the United States Asiatic Squadron under command of Commodore George Dewey in May of 1898. The Haitian Campaign of 1915 is commemorated with a medal, as is the Santo Domingo Expedition, which suppressed a revolt in that country and preserved order during elections in 1916. The Army has its Mexican Service Medal for those involved in any of several expeditions or engagements from April 12, 1911 through June 16, 1919. There is also the Army of Cuban Pacification Medal for United States troops who, from October of 1906 to April of 1909, helped establish a stable government in that island nation. The Victory Medal was initially awarded to all United States service personnel in World War I expeditionary forces, including, for the first time, women serving in the military units. There is a story behind every American medal, a proud story of devotion to country and unselfish service to keep it strong and free. And now, starring Stan Freeberg, act two of Alibi Me. It's 25 past four. We've got only 95 minutes left till 6 o'clock. When Julie don't show, Larkin goes looking. First for Julie, then for you. You gotta be ready for Larkin when he finds you, and you gotta have a pretty sensational alibi. You won't settle for less. Not him. Think, Georgie. Think. Think who you know. Who are your friends? Georgie, think who. Who? <laughs> you see? It works. A second thought, and it comes to you. Joni, that's who. Good old Joni. She'll be your alibi. Now, she's crazy about you. Always has been. Ever since that day up at Bear Mountain. Well, let her be in. Please let her be in. I'll never ask nothing again. Just let her... Well, 
Look what the cat drives. Hello, Joni, baby. I shouldn't talk to you, Georgie. I really shouldn't. It's more than two months. You want to know why? You began to mean too much to me, kid. So stay away from her, I says to myself. Just don't ever see her. She'll wear off, you know what I mean? But I was wrong, Joni. You mean more to me now than ever. I couldn't hold out no longer. That, that's why I'm here. Oh, Georgie, baby, don't ever stay away again. No matter what the reason, don't ever stay away from me. I'm back for good. Oh, it's been terrible without you. All the time singing the blues, not feeling like going out or seeing anybody. Well, that's all over now. You know what? We're going to celebrate. Tonight, we're going out into town. Dinner, a show, dancing afterward. Crazy, huh? Mm, I got a new number <laughs> I've been dying to wear. <laughs> good, good. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, Sugar, uh, anybody uh, been here today? No, not a soul. I was all alone, feeling just awful until you came. Uh, Joni, look, uh, in case anybody asks you, not that anybody's likely to, but in case they should, you know what I mean, uh, do me a favor. Will you tell them I was here with you all day? I'll tell the world you were here with me. I'll shout it from the rooftops. I don't care who hears it. I love you, Georgie. I just love you, love you, love you. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, but look, Joni, uh, in case anybody wants you to be definite, uh, will you say I was here since, oh, since half past three and stick to it no matter what? Half past three? I'll say I was with... Wait a second. What are you trying to pull? Relax, Joni, relax. No. No, Georgie. What's the matter, kid? What's the matter? Plenty. Plenty's the matter. You dirty, no good, miserable son Joni, of a... Joni, Joni, now listen to me. I'm beginning to get it. Trying to sucker me to give yourself an alibi. Joni, stop yelling. Listen to me. What I said is true. I need you. Sure you do. So I'll say you were here with me since half past three. You'll get no alibi from me, Mr. Wise Guy. Now pick yourself up out of that chair and get out of here. How do you like that? You do things for people all your life, and when you want something from them, an alibi, for instance, what do you get? Nothing. That Leo, that Joni, I'll fix them when they get out of this. I mean, how do I get out? Only an hour and five minutes left before Julie's due to see Lieutenant Larkin, and he ain't gonna make the meet. Only 65 minutes. Who is it to give you an airtight, iron-clad, cement foundation alibi? Think hard, baby. Who's around town? Who's left? Timmy. Dope, you should have thought of him first. Timmy, laying there in the hospital, of course. Good old Timmy. Georgie. Hey, it's good to see you. Hi, Timmy. Looking 100%. Sorry, I didn't have time to bring candy or flowers, you know what I mean? How are you doing? Oh, not bad, not bad. At least I'm alive. Doctor said it was a miracle. Uh, how's things with you? Tim, I'm leveling with you. I come up by the back stairs. I didn't want no one to see me. Oh, yeah? In a spot, Georgie? I need an alibi for this afternoon. Since half past three. Oh, you got it. You got it. In this private room. Nobody comes near it. Nurses, orderlies, I don't come unless I give out a yell. And I can have visitors any time I like. No one was here all day. Gee, Timmy, I'll never forget you for this. <laughs> you know, you got one of the oldest alibis in the world. You were sitting up with a sick friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anybody doubts it, you, you send them to me. Shows you. You never know who your friends are till you're in a jam. Uh, I'll have a nurse come in so she can see it. And then you take the elevator down and ask some dumb questions so the operator will remember you. Boy, you don't miss a trick, do you? <laughs> Thanks again, Tim. Yeah. I'll ring for her now. I, uh, uh, Judge, Judge. What is it? My ticket, Judge. Ju Tim, Judge. Tim, what is it? You want a drink of water? Uh, uh, Tim, Timmy, uh, Timmy. Uh, Tim, uh, don't die now. Tim, answer me. Say something, please. Uh, He's dead. My alibi is dead. In a moment, we continue with the third act of 
Suspense. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe, honey. Uh-huh. Joe, darling, put down the paper. I've got something important to ask you. Okay. Joe. All right, all right. What? How many savings bonds do we have? What kind of a question is that? A good one. How many? I'm not sure. I'd have to count. And I'm reading the paper. Now, what do you want to know for? Have we got enough to make things comfortable for us? Very comfortable. That's why I buy on a payroll savings plan. A bond a month will give us quite a nest egg for the future. Enough for a college education? Eventually. But who's going to college? Our children, silly. We don't have any yet. Oh? What do you mean, oh? Better buy some more bonds, honey. Daphne, you mean... We've got a new investment. How about that? And now... Starring Stan Freeberg, Act Three of Alibi Me. I'm sunk. It's five of six and I'm sunk. In ten minutes, maybe Lark will be looking for me and I got no alibi. So I've come home. So I'm walking up the stairs. And I hear a sound. My landlady, Mrs. Ettinger, is nailing down linoleum in the hallway. <laughs> Good old Mrs. Ettinger. Oh, hello, Georgie. You just come in? Yeah, but uh, if anybody's to ask you, Mrs. Ettinger, especially Larkin, you tell him I've been in all afternoon. Understand? Larkin? Lieutenant Larkin? Yeah. Well, I can't do that, Georgie. I, I won't lie to that cop. Oh, yes, you will. You'll tell Larkin I'm in my room all day. No, I won't. Mrs. Ettinger, you don't tell Larkin I'm in all day? I tell him about Charlotte. I, uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I... You don't, Mrs. Ettinger? Please, Georgie, I don't want no trouble. Listen, you'll be in plenty of trouble if Larkin hears about your daughter lifting a fur jacket right out of a department store. I made Charlotte give it back. I marched her into the store myself. We give it back to the manager. Sure you did. But a crime's a crime, whether a store prosecutes or not. Oh, Georgie, please, she's only 15. She's a good kid. Her life would be ruined. You wouldn't tell me. Now, now, Mrs. Ettinger, what's there to cry about? I'll keep my mouth shut just like you want. And you'll open your mouth just like I want, and everything will be fine. If Larkin asks you, I wasn't out of my room all afternoon. Okay? You 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 won't tell him about Charlotte? It's up to you, Mrs. Ettinger. All right, Georgie. All right. I I'll say you was in all day. And there's my alibi. Safe, sealed, and delivered. The best alibi in the world. Quarter past six. It won't be long now. I gotta watch myself when Mark is here. <laughs> Just the right attitude. Not too anxious. Not too casual. Just right. Yeah? Who, who is it? Open up, Georgie. It's me, Larkin. Lieutenant Larkin? Well, well, well. What a surprise. And to what do I owe this great pleasure? Remember I once told you, Georgie, if anything happened to Julie or to you, my first pickup would be the other one. I remember. So what? Yeah. Uh oh. You mean Julie is. He's been. He's been made dead. No kidding. Well, what do you know? And you've come to offer me your shoulder to cry on. You're not surprised. I'm not the only guy who hated Julie, you know. Tell you what, let me know who did it. When you find out, I'll contribute a sawbuck to his defense. Save your money, Georgie. You might need it. Yeah? How come? Remember I told you at the same time you'd better have a good alibi? Because once I got you down to headquarters, I'd prove you did it. The words strike a bell. Give, Georgie. Where were you today? I was nowhere. That's a fact. That's a fact. I was right in here all afternoon. Can you prove it? Well, it ain't easy to prove you were somewhere alone all day. Can you prove you were here? Well, I didn't see anybody except... Oh, yeah. Mrs. Ettinger, my landlady. Yeah? All right. Let's hear her version. All right. Mrs. Ettinger? 
Mrs. Ettinger. What is it? Come in here a minute, will you? Oh, now what? It's always something. What do you want, Georgie? Uh, this is Lieutenant Larkin. He, uh... I won't keep you long, Mrs. Ettinger. Just a couple of questions. Were you in all day? The whole day. Was Georgie in all day? Yeah, yeah, sure, he was in. You're positive? I'm positive. What makes you so positive? What makes me so positive? I cleaned his room, that's what makes me so positive. And I pressed a suit for him later, that's what makes me so positive. And when I was sweeping the hall, his door was open and I saw him. How positive can you get? You're prepared to swear to that in a court of law? Go ahead, Mrs. Edinger, swear. Swear by your daughter's head. I, I swear. All right. Thank you. You can go. Thanks, Lieutenant. That's it then, Georgie. Meaning? Meaning your alibi stinks as far as I'm personally concerned. But for the record, it lets you off the hook. <laughs> you hate that, don't you? You'd like to hang the big one on me, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, who is it? Uh, Lightning Delivery Service, our package for George Lennox. Come in. Who is it from? Uh, uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. Julie Moore. Julie? Open it, Georgie, go on. Go on, open it. I want to see what Julie sent you. Well, uh, okay. It's, that's uh, only a lollipop. I never seen such a big one. All right, who asked your opinion? Beat it. Go on, get out of here. What are you waiting for? What do you think he's waiting for, Georgie? Stake the kid. Stake him? What am I, the mint? You stake him. Okay, cheapskate, okay, keep your lousy tip. Fine thing. I'm here twice this morning and three times this afternoon, shut and up. you're not in. Shut Five up. times up and down them stairs and not even a nickel. Will you shut up? Here you are, kid. Here's your tip. Hey, thanks, Mac. Oh, oh Buck. Hey, thanks. Don't mention it, kid. You earned it. Oh, thanks. Hey, oh, I almost forgot. There's a message goes with the lollipop. Um, to the biggest sucker in town from Julie. That's all there is to the message. It's enough. Get your hat and coat, Georgie. Suspense. In which Mr. Stan Freeberg starred in William N. Robeson's production of Alibi Me by Third Jeffrey, adapted for suspense by Walter Brown Newman. Supporting Mr. Freeberg in Alibi Me were Kathy Lewis, Geraldine Wall, Vic Perrin, Jerome Thor, Jack Crucian, Eddie Marr, and Dick Beals. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. Thank you.